Hello everyone, today I'm going to answer the question, can you predict how booster boxes will perform in the future? Now I think the general consensus of the people will say that no, it is impossible to predict how a booster box will perform in the future just because you don't really know what the demand is going to be like. So to mitigate the risk, you buy a little bit of each set so that the ones that go up a lot and the ones that kind of are in the middle, they do okay. And the ones that go really low, you kind of get an average so that you're not really all the way down or all the way up. You kind of mitigate the risk so you have an average so that you kind of, you know, have a more stable investment. So, you know, if you pretend, you know, invest all your money into a booster box that does really bad, you don't really have that risk when you just, you know, have a little bit in the ones that are bad. And you also have a little bit in the ones that go up a lot and ones that are a little bit in the middle. However, today I'm going to answer the question, is it actually possible to, you know, predict how some of these booster boxes do in the future based on the cards? Now, what do I mean by predicting how they will perform? Now, I'm saying that they'll perform relative to each other. So I'm not saying that a booster box is going to hit a certain number of dollars. I'm saying relative to the other booster box prices. For example, I am not saying that, you know, I'm going to predict that this booster box is going to hit a $1,000 in this certain amount of time or whatever. I'm saying, can you relatively say that one booster box or one set will do a lot better in the future and go up in price more than another set? Is it possible? So I'm going to answer that question today. Before I start that, I want to say a couple things. First of all, I am finally done with my college semester, so I will be posting a lot more often. I know I've been posting like once every four or five days, like I've said in a past video, but now I'm going to be posting a lot more. I'm going to be coming up with more different ideas to talk about, so hopefully you guys will enjoy the more frequent uploads. Also, I just want to say this, I see a lot of comments in my videos, and I feel like a lot of times people that comment on my videos don't watch the whole thing because they will comment about something that I said and say something about it, but I literally answer their question or whatever they say like later on. So please, if you're going to comment about something, just watch the whole video because I might have already answered it. Um, so yeah, if you're going to comment, just please watch the whole video So because a lot of times I answered their question in the video, but they still comment saying that, you know, whatever I said, um, I, I said something wrong, but just watch the whole video. But anyways, today you can see I have a lot of tabs open because I really don't want to cherry pick and I don't want you guys to think that I'm just, you know, picking the booster boxes to, you know, I guess align with what I'm trying to say here. I picked a ton out all of Sword and Shield and a good amount from Sun and Moon. So you guys don't think I'm cherry picking. And obviously you guys can do your own research yourself if you think that I'm cherry picking here, but I really tried not to. I try to be as fair as possible, um, but we're going to see if we can predict uh, which booster boxes are going to do better than others just based on the cards inside of them. Now, obviously, this is not 100% correct, but I'm basing it off of, you know, the history here and what I have in front of me. And I'm going to show you the data, what I see, and I think there's a trend here. So let's see what I find. So first here, Sword and Shield base set. So let's look at the cards inside of here. You can see the cards. There's not even any cards above $100 here, and none of them are really worth that much. The top card is a Marnie card. So let's see the price of the booster box. The price right now is going for around 275 so there you go. And we're going to compare them with the other sets in the Sword and Shield to see, you know, how this booster box is performing versus the other ones based on the card prices. So you can see top card price is $39, and you see really nothing's worth anything. So this booster box is $275. Next, Rebel Clash. Now, I think Rebel Clash is pretty similar to Sword and Shield base set in terms of how the cards are and their popularities. You can see the card prices are relatively the same. The booster box price, however, you can see is actually lower. Now, I think this just has to do with maybe scarcity. Maybe Sword and Shield base was printed less. Um, but you can see here, it's only $220. So actually less than Sword and Shield base. But the card prices were pretty similar. Next, we have Darkness of Blaze. Now, Darkness of Blaze has the Charizard VMAX and has, it has a Charizard card. But you can see there's no valuable cards in the set. So, you know, this set is honestly not that good. And you see with the price of the booster box, look at that. $137. So these ones did actually have, you know, more cards that were valuable than Darkness of Blaze and the booster box was actually, you know, worth more. However, this could be due to, you know, different types of like amounts of prints that they do on these booster boxes because obviously supply is part of it. But just based on the car price alone, you can see that this box isn't very expensive because no one is going to probably really want a box that has, you know, nothing in the box that's actually worth anything. So you can see this price of this booster box is pretty low. Next, Vivid Voltage. So Vivid Voltage actually has an expensive card in here. It has the Pikachu VMAX Secret Rare, but that's about it. And then everything else is kind of trash. You can see the booster box price is actually pretty similar to Darkness of Blaze. However, I feel like in the long run, since this does have an actual chase card in it, I feel like this booster box will do better than Darkness of Blaze just because Darkness of Blaze really doesn't have a chase card in it other than that Charizard VMAX, which is barely worth anything. And you can see even here in the past few months, you can see it's actually gone down versus Vivid Voltage is actually going up. 
Next, battle styles. So battle styles, you can see, this is the introduction of alternate arts, and you can see the Tyranitar V is the chase card in here, and there's still some other decent cards in the set. Now you can't see the booster box price, it's going up slowly, but it's actually less than the other sets. I think this just has to do with supply right now. Uh, I think in the long run this is going to do better because it has alternate arts and more to offer than the other sets. Uh, but you can see here that it is actually lower than the other sets that actually have cards that are not worth as much as battle styles. But I think just over time this set is going to do better. Next, Chilling Rain. So this is the first set that actually has cards that are pretty expensive in it and actually has a lot of cards in it that are expensive. So you can see here. $333, $175. You can see people actually want these cards. Now, obviously, the booster box price does have to correlate, you know, with these prices going up so much because, you know, just recently, these prices have gone up a ton. But even before that, these cards were way more valuable than the other cards I've showed you in the other sets. And if you look at the booster box price, you can see how much this booster box has gone up in just a short amount of time. Now, obviously, you know, you could argue that, you know, Sword and Shield base it's more expensive than Chilling Rain, but you gotta remember that Sword and Shield base came out a lot longer, or was out a lot longer than Chilling Rain. So just over time, this set is gonna probably perform better than you know Sword and Shield base because you can just see how much demand there is for the set with the card prices and the booster box price going up pretty fast. Next here, Evolving Skies. Now, Evolving Skies, I feel like is a prime example of a set that you could predict that it's going to do well in the future. And you can see that here with the card prices and how many cards that are really expensive because people just like the art in the set. Look at the booster box price. It's about $700 now. This set, I mean, you could just look at it, and even before these you know, prices skyrocketed, they were all very expensive. Like, this card, even when it came out, was around $400. So, um, yeah, this is one of the sets I feel like, you know, is outright, you just know it's going to do good. But let's just keep going. Next, Fusion Strike. You can look at the cards here. Look how expensive they are. You can see the artwork. It's a lot nicer than, you know, the first, like, sets I showed you. And let's look at the booster box price. It's at $235. Now, like I said before, uh, if you want to compare it to these older ones, these ones are much older and uh, they've had a lot more time to grow and uh, the supply on these and the prints are probably lower than the other ones. Um, so it's just a matter of time that, you know, these uh, newer sets actually, you know, surpass them. It's just a matter of time. But you can see here that you look at the card prices, there's really expensive cards in the set, hence why the booster box price is going up a lot. Next, Brilliant Stars. Brilliant Stars is another good set. It has a Chainer Gallery in it. I'm not going to show you guys it, but you can see it has a good chase card in here, Charizard V, and some other cards as well. And like I said, it has a Chainer Gallery. We're not going to look at it though. Brilliant Stars, you can see how much has gone up. Now, you've noticed, you know, all these sets that are even newer than some of these other ones back here are doing much better because why? Because they just have better cards in them. These sets like Vivid Voltage, Darkness of Blaze have had so much more time to appreciate and value because they're older. They went, you know, went out of print. Uh, a lot sooner and look they're still stagnant and they're like at 130 and they're not even above MSRP because these sets just aren't as good next Astral Radiance so Astral Radiance another one of the sets that recently just went out of stock on the Pokemon Center website you can see here it does have a few uh, chase cards in here like the Machamp it does also have you know the trainer galley but we're not gonna look at that you can see here it's gone up because you know the cards in the set people want these cards Next, Lost Origin. Lost Origin has a huge chase card, the Giratina V. You can see it's at $460. Like, you know, the other sets like Evolving Skies, it has gone up a lot in value since the booster boxes have gone out of print and out of stock on the Pokemon Center website. But regardless, just based on the prices of the cards alone, you can see people want these cards. And look at the booster box price. Look how much has gone up. Next, Silver Tempest. Silver Tempest, I think another set, you know, that generally people, you know, know that this is a good set because of the cards inside. It has the alternate art Lugia and, you know, the trainer gallery. You know, you look at the price of the booster box, how much has gone up in a short amount of time. And now I want to go to Sun and Moon. Now, Sun and Moon, I want to go to Sun and Moon and, you know, show you guys also, you know, this era because you guys might argue that, you know, since Sword and Shield isn't that old, that this isn't really, you know, good data because. These sets are only a few years old, so maybe after time, you know, some of these sets that are performing really well right now aren't going to do as good as the, you know, the other ones uh, that I showed you earlier because, you know, maybe, I don't know, people in like, I don't know, two, three years from now are going to want this Rebel Class booster box more than, I don't know, maybe like an Evolving Skies or Brilliant Stars booster box. Well, Sun and Moon, I want to show you that this is really not true. Sun and Moon, Guardians uh, Rising, look at the car prices, $58, $30, $28. Nothing really that expensive. Let's look at the booster box price. $412. Now let's go to the next set I'm going to show you. 
Cosmic Eclipse. Now, Cosmic Eclipse is another set on the Sun and Moon that is like I think is generally just known to be a lot better than some of the other ones. Cosmic Eclipse is pretty popular, and you can see why there's a lot of chase cards in the set that are worth a lot of money. Now, let's look at the booster box price. Look at this. It's at around $900. Compare it to Guardians Rising, and you can see, just looking at the card prices alone, you can see why. People want the cards in Cosmic Eclipse more than Guardian Rising. Next, Lost Thunder. You can look at the card prices. I mean, it's not as, you know, expensive as the cards in Cosmic Eclipse, but look at the look at the booster box price. It's still more than Guardians Rising, but it's less than Cosmic Eclipse, because you can see here the card prices and, you know, the people that actually, you know, want to, you know, buy these booster boxes... It has to correlate with, you know, somewhat with the card price. Next, Forbidden Light. Forbidden Light, you can see, is similar to um, the first set I showed you, Guardians Rising. Look at the cards. Look at the booster box price. It's very similar. You can see, look at the booster boxes. Similar card prices, you know, similar price. I don't know if I talked about Forbidden <laughs> There's so many tabs, I don't know if I'm missing anything, but... I'm pretty sure I just talked about Forbidden Light. Next, Celestial Storm. Celestial Storm, you can see, has a couple of expensive cards, but the rest aren't worth that much. But still, look at the booster box price. It's at $700. It's less than Cosmic Eclipse, more than Guardians Rising, and, and um, Forbidden Light. Ultra Prism. You can see, look at the card prices. There's a huge chase card, Lily, Cynthia, and Lusamine. Look at the card price. This one is actually, you know, not as much as some of the other ones. But still, it's a lot more than, you know, Forbidden Light and Guardians Rising. And lastly, Team Up. Team Up, I feel like it's just like Evolving Skies in terms of, like, this set. Just everyone, you know, likes it because, you know, the ex really expensive cards and the artwork in them. Now look at the price of the booster box. It's $2,300. This is the most expensive booster box in the Sun and Moon era. So what is the point of this whole video and what am I trying to get at? If you look at the cards in each of these sets... You can somewhat correlate it to how they're going to perform in the future because these cards that were really expensive, the booster boxes are really expensive. So let's take, for example, Darkness Ablaze. Let's say right now you invest into Darkness Ablaze booster boxes because you think, oh, it's $137, it's really cheap, and it's going to go up to, I don't know, two or $300 in the future because, you know, this set, I don't know, is, is really old and stuff, and, you know, that's, you know, that's the reason why I want to buy this. If you look at the cards in this set, None of them are expensive. There's no chase cards. People don't really want this. And you can see that with the price of this booster box. Now, people are going to argue that, you know, th you can't really, you know, predict this stuff because later in the future, there might be huge demand for this. Well, you know, I showed you guys Sun and Moon era, and these sets are pretty old. They're from the 2010s, like the late 2010s, mid 2010s. And look how they're performing. I mean, it's similar to, you know, Sword and Shield, where the booster boxes that you can see have, you know, better cards inside of them perform better. It's not like... It's just, there's no set out there in Sun and Moon or Sword and Shield that the bad set has outperformed any of the, you know, the sets that are, you know, you know, people's consensus is that it's a good set. People know that Team Up is a good set. It's, you know, people know that it is. And look at the booster box price. Like, it's, it's not honestly that hard, I feel like, to, you know, see that there is a correlation with how popular a set is to how the booster box is going to perform in the future. However, there's going to be a lot of people that say that this is wrong and you can't do this. But I think just based on this data alone, you can see that the cards that are worth a lot more due to their popularity, you know, the booster box price and the booster box, is this going to outperform the other ones that don't have as many expensive cards that are wanted? I think this is just a correlation with uh, booster boxes. And yeah, so I know I just said a lot. I repeated myself a lot, but I think it's very simple. You can somewhat, and this is just based on, you know, what I'm showing you with the data. You can s predict, for the most part, how a booster box is going to do. The ones that are, you know, have more expensive cards like Evolving Skies, Lost Origin, uh, Chilling Rain, Fusion Strike. Generally, you can see with the data here, they're going to do better than sets like Darkness Ablaze, Vivid Voltage, uh, Rebel Clash, Sword and Shield Base. It, it's just how it works in, uh, in, the, in you know, collectibles. You know, people are going to want those more, you know, expensive cards and more collectible cards that are sought after in the future rather than the cards that, you know, in the set are worth like $10. No one's going to want that. So what do you think about this take? Um... Let me know because a lot of people are probably going to disagree and say that it's impossible. But with the data I've shown you here, I think there's a trend going on here that you can see. If you see a set, like, I don't know, Chilling Rain, Evolving Skies, that has really expensive cards that people want, they're going to do better than the other sets that have cards that are worth, I don't know, the top card's $30. And 
I'm just trying to tell you guys this because a lot of you guys like to say that, you know, you can't predict how Boost Device is going to do, so you should just buy all of them. Honestly, I may make another video about talking about that with how I feel like you should, you know, decide which sets to buy because I feel like just a blanket statement saying that, you know, you should just buy a little bit every set no matter what card's in them, I honestly feel like that's not really a good strategy and I'm going to make another video like I said about that uh, specifically to show you guys what I think and why I invested into some of my own booster boxes. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. This was a longer video of mine, but like I said, I will be posting more often, so stay tuned for that and I'll see you on the next video.